Hey, what's up? Uh, I want to catch up with some games from the Gibraltar, Gib Telecom, Tradewise, Charles Fast to Go. So the Gibraltar Masters, uh, a very interesting tournament. Started uh, while Tata Steel was finishing. But it's a very strong tournament. They do have Nakamura, Nakamura, Aronian, MVL, and host of very strong grandmasters. Now this game that I want to look at is from uh, I believe the first round, perhaps no it's from the second round and it's the grandmaster from Russia Mikhail Antipov and he's playing against Elon Schwartz. Now Elon is rated around 2300 uh, and uh, I've known about him. I mean, we have mutual friends. He has played in Iceland uh, on several occasions. He played in the Icelandic League. But then, many years later, we saw him on the final table of the World Series of Poker. So he's more of an accomplished poker player. And uh, the picture that I got for you of him from Wikipedia is uh, of him playing in the final table. He finished fourth. A tremendous accomplishment. And I met him last November uh, when I was at the European uh, Team Championship in Crete. He was playing there in the Open Tournament and I met him one night and we had a good chat and he's a really, really nice guy. So <laughs> I'm sorry Elon that I'm showing this game, but it was a really cool game. So Elon was on the black side, uh, Mikhail Antipov, Grandmaster from Russia, had white pieces and he opened with E4. Sicilian C5 by uh, Swartz and E6 and after the standard moves here we have D6 by Black the Scheveningen <laughs> I just call it Scheveningen but it's pronounced like Scheveningen I'm not even gonna attempt it uh, which was popular back in the day uh, was featured heavily in the matches between Kasparov and Karpov with Kasparov on the black side and there, Karpov did employ the Keras attack, which is what Antipov did, G4. And it's not unlikely that Antipov is aware of that. He's a Russian Grandmaster. And if you're a Russian Grandmaster that plays E4, then it's very likely that Karpov is one of your heroes. And he did play G4 on several occasions against Kasparov in the World Championship matches. H6. Now H4 is the most common move and the most logical to... Uh, Play something like rook g1 and uh, and g5 or protect your rook somehow and play g5. But Antipro played g5, which is has also been played on a number of occasions and specifically by Karpov. So that supports my theory that Karpov is one of his favorite players. However, we will see. This was not exactly Karpov style, but you'll see what I mean. a6 stock standard move in the Sicilian, blocking off any entry on the b5 square with uh, these three pieces. And now f4. Queen d2 is more uh, common. So we're kind of entering ground where it's more likely that white is slightly prepared. But black is just playing standard Sicilian moves here. Knight b to d7. White castles. And white's setup is quite logical. I mean, he has got knowledge pieces out. Bishop goes to the long diagonal, black blocks it, and now centralizing the rooks. So all of white's pieces are active. And he even gives up this pawn, which black takes. And it's probably a decent choice given that it's not so easy for black to do anything. You can play moves like b4, bishop b7. Maybe you'll think about queenside castles, but it's very dangerous. So black at least tried to get something here. Rook takes h2. He's off a pawn. But now with everything dressed and white good to go, he went for it. He played knight d5. And this is uh, quite a common attacking idea in the uh, Sicilian. And the first question is, of course, what if we just take this knight? Well, it's not completely clear. White will get excellent compensation and black will be on the defensive. Elon did not take on d5, but let's examine it. If 
e takes d5. We take back. There's a check on the king. Most likely bishop d8. Uh, king d8. Because bishop e7, we have knight f5. Or queen e3. I'll get there eventually. Queen e3. But uh, yeah, king d8. Now white has some options here. I mean, queen e3 is cheeky because it threatens mate in one. Let's say rook takes g2. Sorry. Thank you for the game. <laughs> Checkmate, Czechoslovakia. Good night. No soup for you. But uh, the king can just run. King c8. The queen can interpose. Knight c6 seems more like it. We can never really take because then we get a protected pawn here. And then we can take an f6, give you double pawns. And the black pieces coordinate very badly. So most likely king c8. And here probably move like rook e3. And white will have compensation. Black is up a piece. But I mean this rook is coming to c3. We could potentially double. Threaten a check here. It's much easier to play for white. Even though the computer will say slightly better for black. Or somewhat better. But in, in practice this is going to be really difficult for black to play. And I, I think white was just ready to play this. Counting on that he would find the resources to win. But uh, Elon played queen c4. Which is, looks quite okay as well. I mean, uh, you might think about taking here in some lines. But now uh, we see rook e3 from white. And that's a cool little move. Because now if you take on a2, I, I can play rook a3. And probably win a good tempo because the queen has to go back. So uh, let's say here. Well, there's also knight, knight c7. Uh, plenty of moves. But I, I think rook a3 is quite logical and then rook back to c3 and white does one an important tempo with the rook here we can both play knight c7 or uh well first knight c7 and then something like knight b3 or move the queen and white is very good here so this is not to be recommended black can still take on d5 but it didn't do that either uh it's a much better version for white here especially since after king d8 Queen a5 is so devastating because after king c8, white to move. Very unusual pattern. White will play rook e8 check. I don't think I've ever seen the queen coming in from this side, covered by the bishop, and this is checkmate. Very unusual, but very beautiful. One of the things that really, you know, attracted me to this game, aside from the finish, but was this particular line. But this didn't happen in the game. Elon, Mr. Schwarz, took on e4. And, well, it is good for black. In all lines except one. Can you find the move for white here? Now take your time, it's, it's quite nice. So the problem here is that this bishop is pinned. So we can't take with the bishop. If we take with the rook, black is taken on d5, probably with the bishop, and most of the uh, firepower is gone from white's attack. So what did Antipov play here? He played the great move. Knight takes e6. And this is just fantastic. Now f takes e6 was played in the game. Let's analyze the alternatives. Taking the queen, knight takes d2. Well, the choices here are limitless. Some people will go for mate in one, knight e2 c7. Others might torture their opponents a little bit with knight d2 c7. And then think about it. Hmm, knight takes c7, or even knight takes g7. I sort of like the knight c7 lines because you don't really don't really need this rook because the <laughs> the knight and the bishop is enough here for the mate. Okay, so knight takes d2 and in mate. So what to do? Black took on e6, like I said. And now <laughs> another nice move, another queen sacrifice. Bishop takes e4. Okay, you didn't want to take it with a knight. Do you want to take it with a rook? 
Actually, he did. <laughs> he took with a rook. But what happens after... Uh, no, he actually resigned here, my apologies. But let's see what happens. If he takes with a the rook, there is mate in one. Another amazing mate. And queen takes e4 is also a try. But here, queen takes h2 is a very strong move for white. And the problem is he can't really move the queen, let's say, yeah. Well, if the, king, if the queen goes back, there's queen h5. This is mate again. And if the queen goes here, trying to prevent that, we have rook takes e6. And we can win the queen, but we can also play here first. Hoping uh, secretly for queen f7. Knight c7 mate. If g6, we just win the queen and give a check on e7. But this is much nicer. So in the game, after bishop takes e4, Elon resigned. And a very nice miniature by the Russian Grandmaster, Mikhail Antipov. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I will see you with more games from the Gibraltar Tradewise uh, Masters Tournament. I get confused with the name because it used to be called Kip Telecom Masters. But I guess Tradewise is, is uh, sponsoring them now. At least it's the Gibraltar Tournament. I played there once. I would like to play there again. And now I'm just rambling. Uh, so let's switch to like some end screen where you can like subscribe, hit like, blah, blah, blah. And if you're like in a really good mood, there's a PayPal link. Okay. Like, come on. There's a PayPal link in the description. Like and subscribe, you know. You know, donate one dollar, man. I'm spending my time here, man. It's a Sunday evening. I could be doing lessons, but, but I'm doing this for you guys. Show the appreciation, man. Come on, man. Do it for me, man. Oh, I'm still, oh, I'm still recording. Oh, man. God damn it. I forgot to play the song. <sighs> well, that's the way it is. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. That's just the way it is. I'm just kidding. <laughs>